Hey everyone, today we're going to use one simple arpeggio and one simple scale to create super memorable melodies. recently made a video about two string arpeggios and it was very well received by viewers but they wanted to see more on the practical uses of this in soloing. So today we're going to put that simple arpeggio to use but we're going to pair it up with a major scale so that you have more to choose from than one simple two string arpeggio. The arpeggio that I taught in the other video was this one, a major seven arpeggio. And then octaves thereof. That was a C major 7 arpeggio, and everything we're going to do today is in C major. So we're also going to use a simple three note per string major scale that looks like this. Now in my opinion, you don't really just want to try to solo with a major scale, for example. It ends up sounding a bit meandering and not really focused on any chord tones. So in that opening intro track, I used the arpeggios to create a memorable motif, and then I used the major scale to simply add a couple of passing tones. In the intro track of this video, you heard me playing over a chord progression that was C major 7, and then moved to F major 7, and then G7, and then finishing back on C major 7. So the opening motif that I started to play was this. Where did I get that from? I got it from the major 7 arpeggios. Now if it doesn't look like either one of those two, it's because I grabbed parts of each. I grabbed this note here, and then that's a C, and then I went up to the octave of it in the other version I was playing came down to the major 7, and then played the 5th. So once again, look at the arpeggios. Using a super simple arpeggio, but making it even more interesting to my ear by playing it this way. To my ears, that's a great phrase, because it's all chord tones, and it's not just played up and down on arpeggio. I simply picked and chose what I wanted to play. I played it a few times to make it a motif and make sure that the listener knows exactly what my melody is. Matter of fact, after this video, I will guarantee that you can probably hear that melody in your head. One more time. It's not because I wrote anything stellar, it's simply because I used chord tones and those sound best. The second chord in the progression was the F major seven. And how did I come up with the notes I played there? simply grab those notes out of the scale. So I grabbed the A here, and then I grabbed the E up here, the C, and then the F. Now that is harder to do because I'm not playing a memorized arpeggio, I'm playing notes out of a scale, but it was one of those things that sounded right to my ear, and your ear will get better the more and more you do this, and you'll be able to pick out those notes from a scale. But initially, that's not easy to do, but that's how I did it, and I wanted to kind of be straightforward about how I chose these notes over the chords. The final chord is a G7, and I simply played a C, an E, back to C, and then finished up on the D, and the D is the fifth of the G chord, and that's why it sounded like a good resolution. But, I simply chose those notes from the scale. There's the scale right there. And I resolved it here on the D, which is the fifth of the G chord, sounded good. And then we went back to the C major seven, and I simply kind of fiddled around on some notes over top of the C major seven, mostly from this arpeggio right here. 
So there wasn't a lot of planning that went into playing that melody, except for this arpeggio, and maybe this one. The rest of it was a lot more improvised than the first part. But you want to use something like an arpeggio to help you phrase build so that you have a nice launching pad for your melody. Chord tones will always rule. Improvising up and down a scale is dicey at best. That's why I say if you can use a simple arpeggio, like this one simple major seven arpeggio, to begin your phrase, then you can kind of venture out and add a couple of passing tones from your scale. Let's look at where these arpeggios overlay the scale. Here's the C major scale. And here is the major seven arpeggios that I used. I wanted you to see that because I wanted you to see that you can easily find it. There's my C major scale. Here's my arpeggio. And so I know I've got notes to choose from right here. Even better right here because here's the octave of the major seven. And then of course the last one is here. So let me now try to play the chord progression with no backing track and you'll hear me outline the chords, but then I'll also add a couple of notes in from the C major scale. So as you can hear from that, you're hearing the chord tones go by, so you don't even need the backing track. You can hear what chords I'm outlining, but then I'm adding a little bit of extra spice with notes from the C major scale, and it really works well that way, and it's not hard to implement. So my advice would be, make sure that you're using one basic arpeggio like this. I mean, it can be anything depending on what your chords are, and then use your scale for those passing tones. That way you're not overthinking everything because there's no reason to use five scales. There's no reason to use 10 different arpeggio shapes. Simply start out with something very simple and you'll end up creating a melody that is that much better. Think about the solos you've heard and why they were memorable to you. It wasn't necessarily because they were doing a bunch of sweet tap arpeggios. It's generally because they were hitting chord tones that made the point and stuck with you. A classic example would be Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd. So keep it simple. Use one basic arpeggio and one basic scale. You can do whatever you want. You can use an arpeggio and then maybe just a minor pentatonic scale. Keep it really simple. Don't worry about spanning the fretboard. That will slow you down more than learning to improvise with something that's going to be memorable. Once you're comfortable building melodies that really have that impact because you're hitting chord tones, then you can venture out and start to add maybe another scale shape or another arpeggio shape and be creative from there. But you always, always want to start simple. If you want the tabs for the arpeggios and the scale that I use today, I put it down in the description below and you can click on that and grab it. I'll put the backing track up over on my Patreon page. And if you want to support the channel that way, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Paul Warren Music. And if you want to support my channel through affiliate links, I am a Sweetwater affiliate as well as Amazon and you can shop through the links down below and purchase gear that I recommend, or any gear that you want to get. It all helps the channel, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you're notified of new video releases. Let me know what you thought of this and how you used it down below in the comments, and I'll see you all next time.